So that's why the Sudan governor, I listened to his comment, I said, well, if Nigeria and Sudan, they don't accept the regulation, this government can borrow and finish uh, by 2000, uh, his tenure by 2015. But the next government that, that will come in, he wonders how that government will survive. The debt burden, your foreign reserves will, uh, will cash, your currency will depreciate, the value of the Naira may go up to, when we begin to uh, change the 200 uh, Naira to a dollar, the uh, foreign reserves are just about 30, 32 billion dollars, probably it will go to 10 or less. Your trade imbalance, because people have no faith in your currency again, the, 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 these, uh, these, uh, these groups that fish and others that read, they, they will give you negative outlook. Presently they have given us stable, then they will give you negative. So uh, people who want to invest in their country will no longer be interested. Nobody wants to go and put his money in a country where they have negative outlook. So you see your economy will, be, it will just be, you will be watching just like you, you put uh, something in, in the river and you watch it sinking. Okay, yeah, 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 Mr. President. So, let's, you let's, people, uh, when you inform them this way, the, the reason will change. They are not fools. So, you know, some people will want to go and um, instigate them. But that's why, of course, among the young who will discuss with the leaders of the stu students. So, they go, we said that, look, go. We didn't say, see, not to tell us that you have accepted this regulation or not, because they are leaders. They have to go and discuss with their peer. But to go and explain to them, because you listen to us, we discuss with the youth leaders, we discuss with religious youth, both Christians and Muslims, all in the effort of passing the information down. Whereas people want to be receivers, they will go to the young people and deceive them. Okay, Mr. President, I was going to ask you, when people look at what has happened over the last uh, three to six months, especially with regards to deregulation, is this a fait accompli? Is this a decision you've taken as government or not? Because the debate has been on for a while. Some people have said, yes, deregulation is, is definite and fuel subsidy has been removed because it's not in the budget. But a lot of Nigerians still have concerns that um, there's no clarity on this. Can you throw light on it and say, That's why we yes, there's no? You see, the budget is, uh, budget is a law. And it's a law that uh, is mainly as an executive law. The executive developed the deal and sent to the National Assembly. And the National Assembly will finish it. So our projection is that we will be able to dialogue with Nigeria and uh, we will not be able to put any money to subsidy. But the budget has not come out from uh, the National Assembly. So in so essence... We have not uh, concluded it and that is why we are doing all these discussions. So well, in essence, your them. decision left to Mr. President is remove fuel subsidy, yeah, deregulate. We, we, our own decision, and not just Mr. President, before we get to this point, we met all the governors. We, those of us who have the responsibility to manage the resources of the country. The burden is on us, President and his vice and his uh, team of ministers and the governors, the deputy governors and their team of uh, commissioners. The burden is on us to manage the resources of this country. So this government... So we all look at the whole thing and say that if we must survive as a nation, if our economy will not be allowed to crumble, if we must create jobs for our young people, if we must create wealth for Nigerians, we have to deregulate. Okay, so that's the position of the government. I would let uh, Fatima Akilu ask the next question, but I must also mention for those who are watching us at home, uh, in the next few minutes we will be taking calls uh, from all the viewers around the country. And I must also mention that we are being watched now all around the world on the internet and also on Ben Television in London for those who are watching across Europe. So the number to call wherever you are around the world if uh, you're in Nigeria, the number to call will be on the screen now, and that is 0962511000. And if you're calling from outside Nigeria, you will have to put plus 234 and take off the zero and start with nine. So, Fatima Kilu, your question. Uh, Mr. President, um, 
A lot of people understand that, and the government has made the case very clearly, that we need additional resources and we need to find different funding streams in order to uh, fund the projects and programs we need for this next decade. However, what people are really upset about is that they're facing 2012 with multiple taxations. There's not just the removal of fuel subsidy, which they think will impact their life negatively. There's um, increases in electricity, uh, water rates, uh, toll gates, uh, we've been told are coming in, and also uh, the issue of uh, license plates. So people are thinking there's a lot that we have to put up with in 2012. What can you tell us to ameliorate this fear that we have as we enter the next um, yeah. So what, so what, thank you. In fact, I'm happy that you raised this issue of toll gate because somebody else has asked me. The federal government is not introducing toll gates in 2012. Federal government may not introduce toll gates in 2013, maybe also 2014. But federal government is encouraging the PPP arrangement to build major road infrastructure. Of course, like uh, maybe the Lagos, the Biden, that was given out long ago. So if a private person builds the road, then definitely that road will be told. But the roads that the federal government is building, we are not introducing to this. There was a time where there was a little council meeting, and we mentioned that to control and monitor movement of vehicles, we need to build tolls. And that was misinterpreted as toll gates for the purpose of uh, taking revenue. No, we are not. We cannot uh, multiply uh, this. If we are deregulating, at the same time we cannot introduce toll gates because the same vehicle that the pump price of petrol is increasing that will pay for it. But the state governments also build roads. Sometimes they give out a private, the concession they wrote out. Those roads are private roads. But you know that the law so that if you are toiling a road, you must make an alternative road for all the ordinary road users. And that is the issue of uh, who benefits. So federal government, for us, even if uh, federal government would put a toll gate, and I'm telling you that federal government has no plan to, to, to put a toll gate, even if you see toll gates being constructed, the rest are sure that they are not for the purpose of collecting money from any road user. And before you even collect money, you have more provisions for others. Take the road going to the airport. This is a road where a number of people felt that was supposed to build toll gates. If we are to build toll gates at all, which will not be next year or 2013, but probably the first lanes where people like you who don't want to queue up and waste time, who want to pass, we can toll the inner one and leave the outer lane for people. And until you make that provision for alternative routes, you cannot toll any road. That is, that is the law. But just on that to tell Nigerians that federal government is not going to, build, uh, to collect tolls on federal government roads, for all what I know, we have not taken that decision. But, but the private roads, uh, if you talk about water rates, water rates is the exclusive preserve of the states is the states that we talk about water rates. I don't know if FCC, uh, maybe Abuja, mm -hmm. but uh, nothing is free. If you must get water all over the world, you pay. It's only in Nigeria there are so many things uh, uh, people get is so free. Uh, if you, for those who work in Europe, they will tell you that. Uh, by the time you get their salary, almost everything is gone because you pay for everything. Nothing is no free lunch. You have to pay. In Nigeria, people want to use power, but they don't want to pay. Nigeria, people want water, but they don't want to pay. They, don't, they want the government to even come to their kitchen and remove the garbage and dispose, but they don't want to pay. Okay, Mr. President. But uh, these are uh, services time. provided by uh, state, uh, local governments, and states and city authorities, not the federal government.
Uh, Mr. President, we will now be opening the lines, and uh, the number to call is on your screen. It's 09625-1000, so you can call us from anywhere in the world. We'll take the first call as soon as it comes through. But while we're waiting for that, Mr. President, may I very quickly ask, the last six months of your government in office, what would you say has been the achievement while we wait for the first call to come through? Well, thank you. You know, this is a quite a, a challenging uh, uh, period. Uh, uh, we have a security challenges which we are battling. But one thing uh, you, you can notice is that we have set up a very strong economic team, and everything has to be based on foundation. I don't normally say we completed this project, completed this project. Projects are ongoing. And some projects have been completed within this period. We have commissioned some projects, especially some power projects and so on. But those are not the issues. What I consider are things that are sustainable and things that give you a clear direction to the future. We have set up a very strong economic team. We have a very a map of a very robust agri program that we are going to, uh, to, to follow up. And when we follow up these sectors, especially the economic sector, of course, uh, of course the addition, you see what is happening. Yeah, people are suffering now because a lot of massive innovation is going on. I believe before the end of January, when you are traveling out from the airports, you will appreciate and be happy to be in Nigeria, like what it used to be. So we really have really set up a solid foundation to move. Even the uh, road infrastructure. So my my happiness is that we have assembled a competent team of Nigerians, men and women, that are committed, that will drive the economy. As we progress into next year, by December next year, when you, you may not even ask the question, you yourself will give us the statistics of what we have done. Well, Mr. President, I love specifics. That's what I thrive on. And um, I will say to you, Mr. President, that in terms of the next six months then, yes, the last six months you've used for laying foundation, fantastic team of people in your government, the economic team that you have, nobody can question the caliber of people there. So building on that foundation, if I lay foundation, I would know I'm laying foundation for a six bedroom flat or a building that will be 10 story. What is your projection? The next six months to one When you're running the government as a federal government, don't go that way. I didn't even want to measure. If you look at even the power sector that Nigerians, all of us got worried about. If you look at the, the generation, it has improved. But we have no reason where we want to go, and that's why people are, will continue to complain. But the generation has appreciated significantly, and uh, uh, in quite a number of places it is better. Though occasionally we have problems of gas, and it comes down. If you look at the last six months, even the crisis we have in the Niger Delta, then we will be able to bring it down significantly. And we are now exporting the volume of crude we're supposed to. But I also said, these are not, I, I don't like to celebrate this. Okay, you know. um, we will celebrate a lot, Mr. President, but we've got uh, someone on the line now. I believe that will be Tunji Ibitoye. Uh, please be aware that it's got to be one question and one question at a time only. So please, Tunji Ibitoye from Ibadan, go ahead and ask us the question. Not sure if he is still on the line, so we will um, continue and get Mr. Mm -hmm. on the line. Can you very quickly ask Mr. President your question? Hello. Oh, the voice for you. Okay, we just lost him. That's unfortunate. So, Mr. President, uh, in terms of the plan for the next six months, then. For the next six months, if you listen to our budget speech, you will see that that is the roadmap. If you listen to the, the details given in the budget, one thing 